Hello, welcome back. Recently, I was sent a good size sample pack of the Fabriano Artistical Watercolor Paper from a art store called Jessica. I think they operate from both Australia and New Zealand, but this one was, but the one that sent it to me was specifically from New Zealand. In the pack, there are seven sheets of two different colors, um, traditional white and extra white in different textures depending on the manufacturing process. I, as always, am fashionably late to the party, but there is a challenge called the eight color wheel happening at the moment, but I only have seven colors, so I'm just going to do the seven rainbow colors. So I really love Nintendo. I decided to do fan art of the characters from different franchises. I want to do a quick wash of red on this because he's going to be red here. Um, let me just get some tape. Mario was obviously red for me. There is no question about it. <laughs> this is my Dolwenkin palette that I purchased from a art friend from Germany. Um, I don't know if she still makes paints but her wife is on youtube and i'll link her description and channel in the corner there but i really want to finish using this palette not because it's bad i really love the colors of it um but because they're really really runny so i can't store it in any other way at the moment i turn it on the side like that these colors will run so my red is completely contaminated by the yellow there and then these blues here especially this one here it's completely run down to these blues here and also this brown here yeah i wish i could travel with it i i do love it these natural colors here are really really pretty and different especially i think this one is made from stone floor it's gorgeous um so i'm trying to use it as fast as possible <laughs> i don't want to throw it away because like i said the paint's still quite good it's just that it's difficult to maintain um and with runny paints i notice specifically around the yellows there's a lot of rust happening there and it makes sense, metal and water. So I don't want my paints to get rusted anymore too. I used the Fabriano hot press in traditional white, which turned out to be one of my favorite papers. It has this very beautiful texture, even though it's hot press. Since he's so cartoony, I want to do thick lines and a white outline for the sticker effect, that Paper Mario has. There are many variations of him and I love drawing him in paper form with bits of the world that he explores in, in that specific game. Um, I think there was one where he had a crown as a companion and then there was another one with a star. So I, I love just putting him in the front and then having a sneak preview of all the worlds behind him as well. Paper Mario has always been one of my favorite versions of Mario and the story in those games is typically not the usual Bowser, Kidnets, Peach, but there are other villains who are new too and that gives him a new form of life in a way. Um, but yeah, ta-da, Mario! Next is Puppet Waddle D in orange. I use the cold press and traditional white to draw it and switch back to my usual fine liners instead of the fountain pen. It was clogging up too much and beginning to make me upset. <laughs> the Stiddler pigment liners are what I usually use. The texture in this paper is also very gorgeous but it's not suited to my quote unquote style of painting. I think it shines the most when there's a lot of wet on wet techniques but I don't use that very often and the colour pencils create too much texture for my liking. 
those lines were kind of hard to draw onto this paper. My fine line I keep sort of giving way halfway there. But now the line work is done. Just gonna give it a quick wash of orange just like Mario. So Waddleby is one of my favorite Kirby characters. I have the amiibos of him and I was going to use him for orange but I thought you know what let's just go up one more step because there's lots of variations of Waddle and Puppet Waddle is my favorite. It's like a handmade version of Waddle and there's two on inside of it that basically operates it um, and there's a couple of versions of it so one version is where it's sort of robotic and it's made from old scrap metal and then I've seen one where um, they made it out of paper mache so I thought why not just mix the both of them and make it like the paper mache version and the metal version as well I've been enjoying mixing some of the colours straight onto the paper instead of fully mixing them on the palette recently. I feel it gives the colours more character, like this orange wash here where there's hints of yellows and red at the same time. And it makes all different shades of orange. I have Amiibo Worldy and he's lounging in day dream- or should I say night dreaming on a cloud covered in stars so this is a reference to that. I tried to paint it like it was an evening sky to make the orange stand out on the blue instead of just clashing too much with too much of one color, which can really make the drawing look like it's a blob of that color. Thankfully, it wasn't too bad here. Yeah. Puppet Waddle Dee. I decided to line this Pikachu with a coloring pencil because um mega pikachu mega evolution pikachu has a lot of glowing effects and i thought the eyeliner would be too harsh for that so hopefully this will mellow out with some water and help me create that glowing effect that i want around him i feel like he needs a little bit of an outline but i can't figure out or i can't decide what to use either color pencils or black liner. I don't want to use a black liner because I feel like these areas where it's supposed to be a glow will become quite harsh. But he definitely needs something. <laughs> Alright, I think it stands out a little bit more with all this grey outline just to darken some of that yellow. Um, still not 100% happy with it but I'm not touching it anymore because I feel like I'm going to overwork it if I do. And so this is Pikachu. It's Link's turn. This is Link from Ocarina Time. It's my favorite Link. I don't like the one with the blue tunic. Because I feel like green tunic is my childhood and I'm sticking to that. <laughs> I couldn't decide whether to draw child or adult Link from Ocarina of Time, but eventually I settled on the child version halfway through lining him. So there's a lot of white poskas in this one to cover the mistakes. I used the extra white rough paper for him and I love, love, love this paper and how the green dried in the background. This was the one that made me decide to keep the backgrounds for the final edit where I bring all the drawings together. I mean. Look at it, it's so soft and beautiful. The rough texture have deeper values so depending on the lighting Link has a nose or he's Voldemort's twin. <laughs> Alright, Aqua Bomber. She is my light blue and she's on the extra white hot press paper. And like Mario, I adore this paper. I don't think it really matters the colour of the paper, or at least for me. Um, yellowish or white, it's the same to me. So Bomberman64 was a childhood favourite. 
I remember clearly watching my brothers play on solo mode on repeat and beating me in multiplayer. Oh, here I'm just showing that I wanted to keep the bomb effects behind her soft so I lined them with pencil. Anyway, I don't think Echo Bomber came out until later games where they gave them genders but I do remember a light blue reskin of Bomberman in the multiplayer. And because of that, along with her colors, I found out that she's actually an unofficial mascot of the trans community. That's pretty interesting, right? I got too into the artistic mode when I was doing the wash in the background and splattered everything everywhere, including on my camera lens. I'm trying to decide whether I want these bomb effects to be bright red like her or blue because she's blue theme. I think I might try this one in blue first because it's a bit small and I can change it to whatever color later. I think it looks fun in blue. It's so weird because I usually use a number two brush which a lot of people think is very very thin and tiny but in this case it's actually too big and I'm like painting out of the lines. Some extreme concentration happening right here. Trying to keep in the lines. Like right here. Just painting out of the line. Trying to keep it in the line. Yeah. I think it looks fine in blue. Alright, so all the colors for her is basically down, but I noticed in some of the drawings of her on Google, she's actually quite, she's actually got quite a thick outline, she's more continuous, so I might just use some Posca and just make the outline a bit thicker. Fingers crossed it doesn't run it. <laughs> And I think the thick outline was a terrible idea, but here's Aquabama and I'll definitely, if I read you her, not use the thick line. <laughs> On the extra white cold press is Eloni from Animal Crossing. I got distracted and I didn't realize I didn't film anything till the end. This is supposed to be a lot brighter blue than what I painted. I think I messed up with making some of the colors a little bit muddy in the face. Um, because, because Animal Crossing characters are usually really bright and pastel and vivid, vibrant, but this isn't. So, this is Eloni. I wanted to keep it nice and soft with color pencil outlines, but the color pencil sort of bled into the watercolors. It's not watercolor pencil, but on this paper, it it dissolves quite easily and becomes tiny little particles like this. Maybe it's because the pencils are within the paper grooves, and so it moves around. But I do like this this watercolor effect around the outside. So this paper, I would say, is probably better for more wet on wet techniques. The last one on my list is Middle Night. I was going to do a character from each Nintendo game, excluding Smash Brothers because they all merge in that one anyway. And then I completely forgot that Midnight is also from Kirby, like, like Waddle D. So unfortunately, I have two characters from Kirby. I really like Midnight's design. Hopefully, I can paint it and color it with justice. <laughs> So I have a few ideas for coloring this man. I think it's best to start with eyeliners for lining him because he's often drawn quite he's often drawn 
very crisp. And that's catching me. I kind of want to make the smoke effect negative painting. Um, with no outlines at all. Yeah, I often see Maiden Knight drawn in a Victor style, even though he's pretty cartoony. So, to be honest, fine liners was a good decision. I had completely forgotten Maiden Knight's eyes were yellow and not black, so I had to cover it over yellow Posca. I have some Karen Dash Neo Color crayons that I thought was the best option to create a smoke effect since they are water soluble, so I can lighten it wherever I want it to be softer using water. They are Definitely better than any watercolor pe color pencils or color reactivated medium that I have ever owned. I think they're great and that's Meta Night done. So these drawings are all completed now. I scanned them into my PC and I sent it to my iPad and popped them onto Procreate onto a color wheel. I got a template of a seven sided circle from Google and used that as my reference. I think that's much easier than my brain trying to divide a circle into sevens. <laughs> At the beginning, I picked the color for the backgrounds from the drawings, but later I changed it to the lightest color from the painting so I can find a way to make the watercolor effects from the background blend into the little wedges to make it more cohesive. I really debated on whether to keep the watercolor effect or not but like I said before the link piece really convinced me it's probably the best choice seeing that the middle of the color wheel circle is very plain in the end so that texture just gives something else for the eye to go towards and finally after two weeks of working on and off this challenge with different lighting and noises and shifts here we are I am pleased at the end result one thing I would change is the character selection. Even though I love Meta Knight, I would have switched him for that smug hat kid from the hat in time. And then I'll really have one character from each Nintendo franchise. I really enjoyed this challenge and I do challenge you to do it too. And tag me on social media so I can see your version too. So keep painting. Until next time. Bye.